So today I'm going to start working on the floor for the van. We've been through a couple of different ideas, um, but I think the most sensible option is to put a full insulated floor down front to back and then build all of the cabinets and things on top of it. The only uh, change to that is where the showers go in. We need to make sure we leave plenty of room for the drain. And talking about the shower, we've got a shower tray and toilet mount from Magnum Motomes because they do quite a nice setup that's in two pieces and it allows this to be trimmed down across its width a bit which should allow for the wheel arch there. One of the big challenges here is laying out the shower tray so that the drain is in a sensible place. You might be able to see my pen marks where the chassis rails are and you can see that this drain is in line with the ridge. When we lift this up we can see that that ridge sits over a chassis rail. So right now the drain would be trying to go through the centre of the main chassis rail which isn't something we can do. So I think what we're going to do is lift the shower tray up and then be, have an elbow to this area which is clear and another elbow down through the floor. It will mean that the shower tray is sat maybe 100mm off the van floor but uh, I think that's okay we've got plenty of headroom in here. Uh, also I need to remember to make sure I can put an access hatch in here so that should we ever need to get under here to service that drain if there was a leak or anything we can still get at it. The height of the floor is dictated by these seat rails. For a while we were considering having no insulation and a lower floor down in the garage area but it locks us into the layout probably earlier than we can really be comfortable doing it because we're not 100% sure that it's it's nailed down yet and I want to get on so that's why we're having one floor front to back and to achieve this height we're going to have 25mm of insulation which is also going to be supported by 25mm thick lath timber and then a 12mm hardwood face plywood floor and then a vinyl flooring on top of it and that should bring it pretty much either in line or just underneath these seat rails. So this is my first mock-up to test my layout idea and I think it's going to work. But it's a bit tight, there's not a lot of uh, wiggle room. So let me just walk you through all of this. So working from the front backwards we can see that this bit here was the only place we could fit the shower tray and it did take a while and a lot of careful measurement to make sure I could find a shower tray that was going to fit in the gap between the wheel arch and this upright here. Because anything bigger than that meant that they come out further and start Sorry, the over the air so stand in the garden very small overlay here. Now we've got the toilet, the shower tray next to it. Position that we looked at where the um, toilet was. And there's plenty go. of room. That's the probably going to go a little bit of room, but could go towards the wheel arch a little bit. Then, uh, but there's a little bit of a gap. We know there. it's got enough I think space that toilet between the toilet sit slightly further wall, forward. And but the there's garage. enough of a gap. Then my bike is the biggest of our bikes, and as you can see, the. Bottom of the forks is just inside the front, which is where the tray will stop. And okay, we've got some cables that'll touch the back door, but that doesn't really matter. Then Jenny's bike, which is thankfully a little bit shorter, will sit alongside it. So the handlebars will be about here, and the rear wheels will be in the same place. And then that gives room on this side for more stuff and the children's bikes. Uh, apologies if there's any wind noise on this. So most of the wood is going across the ridges and it's 25mm tall which gives space under here for the 12mm ply 
and then the lino. But along some of the edges, so this edge around this doorway and across here, the wood can't sit on the edges. When we stand oops, when we stand this up against it, show you on the other side, we see that the wood sits about four millimetres too tall. So what I did was went and got my table saw out, set it up, and on one full length I've taken four millimetres off the width so that that piece that I just showed you can be used then to do this section across here, across here and here and I may need, just depending on my spacing, I may need sort of down here or something, I don't know yet but I, if my spacing doesn't work out I might need it elsewhere. Now I've got that I can start cutting to length and planning where I'm going to put my rivnuts in the floor. So originally I had a bit of a false start with the um, rivnuts on this piece in particular. I had basically the rivnut tool snapped in this one and then trying to do it without a rivnut tool jammed the bolt in here. But thankfully the type of rivnut tool I've got, the part that broke was just a standard bolt. It's, um, M6 by 40 socket head cap screw in grade 12.9 so I've just bought some replacements got loads of them and I realized I think the issue was that the thread needs to be lubricated to work properly so I've bought some grease as well to use with it and since then I've got these two bits on and then here you can see the rivnuts that I've got for this bar here so I've got everything ready and now I just need to apply some grip adhesive to the bottom of it and then screw it down. So we've managed to get most of the support in for the floor for all the front sections. I'm going to work on the back and then Jenny's going to come out and start putting the insulation in between all of the battens that we've put down so far.
So let's try and solve the issue with the this back end being caved in. I'm going to make up a backing plate. Oops! It's going to sit across the black back and come up to the bottom of the floor. It's going to screw into the end of my rail Ooh. garage support floor floor support rail so they come to here the plywood sits in there so I've used my scribe to mark this section along here now I'm going to cut it out with a jigsaw and then once I've got that right I can measure it flush with the top of the floor level and cut a dead straight line and that should give us nice support and give us a clean finish on this back edge. So today we've been working on creating the new floor template. This is the old floor, but unfortunately it's pretty trashed, especially towards this back end. So we've used this as a starting point, and we've got cardboard underneath it that we're tracing onto it. This cardboard is exactly the same width as the boards are going to be cut to. Now, if I'd have been sensible, we'd have thought about this to start with and put um, wood into th in the floor at 1220, which is the width of the plywood. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't, so we we're going to have to take some of the length off most of the board. I think one of them's at 1220, but the first two boards and the last board aren't. I mean, that's okay for us because we've got a track saw, so we can easily and accurately do that. But um, if I was doing the floor again I'd have just made kind of I'd have put timber battens in the floor at 1220 from the front edge and then work my way back from there anyway so it's taken quite a bit of effort to try and cut these to size and then line them up with where they are going to end up in the van so that's involved taking some kind of data measurements off this line to the edge and off this line to the edge and then at the back from the rear of the uh, wheel arch back we're gonna have trace around it with a sharpie just in case I knock it but now I'm gonna cut it out with a Stanley knife and then we'll check it in the van and uh, modify and update the templates if we need to so here we can see the templates, the cardboard templates. Actually we're really close, only a couple of bits to trim off. 
and then trimmed out the area for the rails to poke through and underneath the shower where the drain is going to go and here where the diesel heat is going to go which turned up yesterday so that might be going in soon just need to trim off the back of this edge just at the corners and I've got a little bit to trim on the end and then we can start um, tracing it out onto the plywood and cutting it out With a little bit of gentle persuasion, the first floor plan, uh, first floor panel is in. I'm really happy with how that looks. Um, it's very close to being flush, and once we've got the lino over the top, the lino should bring the floor flush to the rails. Uh, I've had to mark out where all of the battens are, and then I'm going to screw it down probably going to go use a laser line to join them all up so I can uh, easily spot where they are mainly because I've got one so I'm using the cardboard templates to mark out the plywood typically I'm just going to mark out the straight lines although I've run along these I'm going to double check these with a straight edge and um, remark them as necessary I've, well for this I don't need to remark this I'm just going to use my um, track saw just to take that straight off take this straight off use the template I'd made for the rails for that bit and then use the jigsaw for the little corner uh, little cutouts So that's the second panel in, really happy with how that one's gone as well. It needed a little bit of fettling to uh, get it to fit, but it's in now. I haven't screwed anything down yet, I'll get all of them cut first. Not sure how clear it is, but I've now marked out on the floor in pencil everywhere there's a batten underneath the floorboards and then I'm going to use my auto feeding screw gun to screw them all down. So this is an auto feeding screw gun definitely not a necessity but it is nice to have and basically you can keep it running the whole time and you just keep pressing down pressing down pressing down and it screws the screw in perfectly to the same depth every time.
That's the advantage of the uh, auto feeding screw gun. I've just put in about 220 screws in um, under 15 minutes. I just need to go around there are a couple of misfeeds and you can't do anything about that with the auto screw gun so you still need a normal screwdriver just to go around and make sure everything is either flush or below the floor level but that shouldn't take very long. The eagle eyed of you might have spotted these holes which weren't in the previous sequences uh, I realised whilst I was editing the video that I'd made a point about to myself make sure I added a clearance hole so that should we ever need to get the latch undone or should we ever need to get the spare wheel off put a hole in the floor so I came back just unscrewed these two panels took them up marked out where it needs to be and made the cutouts screwed it all back down again yeah so that's the floor down now really happy about that just got to get some vinyl for it um, got a couple of samples on order uh, and once we've decided which way we're going to go I'll get that ordered and then we can get that on and glued down